Hi again. I'm Uli Korch from the Monetary Trust Initiative. And uh, finally, I think, finally, we're going to come up with some answers. Uh, I know I've sort of, you know, dragged you along and dragged you along and dragged you along and teased you. And, uh, and here we are with some hardcore information and also perspective for us all to move forward. All right. No recap this time because as it is, this video is going to take longer than, than all the other ones. I want to start by asking you a question. Here goes. How many of you know that right now, today, we have two radically different kinds of currencies in circulation in the United States? Both US dollars. Hands up. Oh, no hands. See, that's typical. People don't know that. All right, let, let me show them to you. So let, let's go through this. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what is this? Don't be shy. Give me an answer. <laughs> okay, I know I'm playing games. Uh, this is a US note, right? There we go. It's worth $5. Well, what about this? What's this? Careful now. Careful. Careful. I would be very careful to answer what this is. This is also a $5 note and it's also worth $5. There's only one problem. I bought this on eBay for $17. And you go, what? You're kind of weird. I went to the bank and I said, I, I want to, because I had a 10, I said, I, I want you to give me two $5 notes. But I paid $17 for this one. They say, whoa, whoa, what is this all about? Okay, let, let me walk you through this. So this is called a Federal Reserve note. And that's what most of us have in our pockets. You can see the difference if you look at the two. The, the, the other one is called a US note and it has red numbers. Uh, now there's also a red symbol on this one, but that, 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 isn't, that isn't always there, okay? Uh, but the, the red numbers, that, that, that's always there. What's the difference? This Federal Reserve note with the green numbers is created by the Federal Reserve Bank today through debt. All of this is created by issuing debt, debt with interest. And it's this note that effectively has created $18 trillion worth of debt by the federal government. You say, whoa, 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 that, that's because they overspent in their deficits. Well, yes, that's true. But that's because we are forced to pay interest on this because it's issued by the Federal Reserve Bank, a private institution, and by your banks around the corner. This, on the other hand, was created by the U.S. Treasury. Now, it goes through the Federal Reserve, but it's deposited, created by the Treasury, deposited in the Federal Reserve Bank, in the government account, without any interest whatsoever. Wow, two different kinds of currencies. Let's talk about this. I want to start, we're going to keep these. Who knows, I'll probably pull them out of my pocket again, all right? Let's talk about debt first of all. Debt is current consumption converted into a future liability. Listen, listen really carefully. It's current consumption, what I'm going to spend right now, what I want right now, I've got to have this right now. And you know what, my kids or my grandkids or maybe we, we're going to pay it in the future. It's current consumption converted into a future liability. And it is a liability. This definition is really, really important because this whole series is called infrastructure without debt. All right, how does that work? Well, technically, according to federal accounting principles, these US notes are also called debt. You see, th there is no equity accounting in the, in the government. When, when the rest of us do a balance sheet, we've, there's always three items on the balance sheet. Top is liabilities, uh, top, top of the assets, then comes the liabilities, and then it's equity, right? Well, with the government, there's no equity. That does, doesn't exist. So what, what, what are you going to call this? You're going to call it liability, which is a debt. But you see, there's no future obligation. So it's what I call no debt debt. And by the way, I'm not the only one. Um, throughout this whole, this, this particular video, uh, I'm going to keep on referring to our website, which is called infrastructurewithoutdebt.org. And I'm going to walk you through the whole website at the, at the end of this particular video. But there's a paper under documents, uh, documentation, you'll see there's a paper by the Congressional Research Service. And if you really care to check out whether I'm right or not, go to page one at the bottom. There's a note that says, this is debt in the United States, blah, 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 blah. Excluded are all US notes, you see? So in spite of the fact it's legally called debt, it's actually not debt. And even the federal government agrees with that. So this isn't me. I didn't dream this up. Let's go through some history because you're, you're going to say to me, wow, this is really, this is weird stuff. I've, I've never heard of any of this. Okay. Um, 
Let me walk you through the fact this is not new. This has been done before uh, very successfully, and we've quit doing it. All right. So let's, let's go back to 1861. We have a civil war, and President Lincoln is, in, is the president at that point, and he recognizes that we're going to have trouble paying for the cost of the Civil War. So what he comes up with is the quote, it's called the Act for a National Loan in 1861. It does all sorts of things, creates uh, the, the right to issue new treasuries, creates all sorts of debt instruments, but it also creates $50 million of these things, except they're a bit different. They, issue, they, they do not carry interest, that's good, but they are redeemable in specie. Specie are gold or silver coins, because in those days, everything ran on gold. That was kind of the gold standard. Does that sound familiar? All right. So they made these redeemable in gold or silver. And then they started talking. This was the middle of the year. I think it was in July of 1861. They started talking among themselves, and experts came along, congressional reps, etc., and they said, hey, you know, you don't have to do that. So in, I believe it was in January of 1862, so just a few months later, they had, an, had another act, and it was called the Legal Tender Act of 1862. By the way, copies of these are all on the website. So again, check me up, prove me I'm wrong, you'll see I'm right, all right? So it created 150 million of these U.S. notes, and then they started becoming called U.S. notes, okay? But what's interesting is, of that 150, the first 50 million were deliberately done in order to repay the original 50 million from the previous year so that now none of it is redeemable in gold or silver. So you now have a new currency that creates no interest liability and is not redeemable. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the U.S. note. It later on came to be called greenbacks, okay, uh, because they're all green. I wonder why. <laughs> Let's walk through the numbers. Um, the amount that were is issued went up and down depending on how much money was created by private banks, what was going on, and over the next few years there were a number of different acts which created up to a maximum of about 450 million in circulation. That, by the way, is equivalent to f about 40% of all the money in circulation in the United States at that point. That would be the equivalent of us doing this today for, are you holding on to your seats? $5 trillion in today's economy, okay? Now, we don't need anywhere near that amount to fix up our infrastructure, but that's how strong this program was then. What did it do? What were the effects? Well, it paid for the Civil War, it, and then they started paying, uh, uh, building infrastructure, exactly what we need to do today. It created the first national transcontinental railway. It created a national canal system, created schools, created hospitals, all sorts of things that were necessary for us to become the country that we are today, all right? Um, and of course, some people complained, that's inevitable. So 10 years later, it went to the Supreme Court saying, hey, really, is this legal? Because the Legal Tender Act said these things are legal for all debts. By the way, there are some exceptions because of international trade. Um, and if you want to get into details, go to the website. If I were to go through all the details here, it would just take way too long. There's absolutely no way I could do it. But the, the, uh, the Supreme Court said, yes, absolutely, this is totally legal. This is absolutely correct. And that has never been overturned. That is the law today, right now, as you are watching this. All right? Um, because they're identical in purchasing power for the money that you are more used to, uh, they, the, the, the Warren Bills continued to be replaced by Congress, uh, by the Fed, I'm sorry, uh, until 1971. And they, they sort of, uh, the U.S. went off the gold standard internationally at that point, and they realized, well, there's no value, there's no reason to keep on replacing them because they're identical. You go to a bank, you get one of these or one of these. There really isn't any different. Uh, but about 240 million of them today are still in circulation. That's what the Fed says. I, I really don't know, but uh, that's what they say. All right? Let's go back to the whole concept of debt and interest, because that's why I brought up the U.S. notes, because they are a non-debt-bearing instrument. Okay, they're all called notes, and a note technically is something that you owe, that's where that word comes from.
Okay, so if any of you have a mortgage, you know that you have to sign a note. So let's talk about debt and interest, okay? Um, when we deal with infrastructure, I, I just got, I gotta, I gotta say something here. We're shooting this out in the garden. We're talking about infrastructure and infrastructure is part of the beauty around us, whether it's a waterfall behind me or ponds or roads or airports. So it's not just hardcore stuff that makes work and money. It's also soft core things like recreation and sitting out here in this garden, which is, which is what I do on a regular basis. By the way, even when it rains at times, I have a place where I can sit in the rain. That's all part of infrastructure, all right? Back to debt and interest. Ultimately, again, this is a mind-blowing statistic, about 50% of all of our infrastructure costs are not the cost of construction or remediation or whatever, it's interest payments. You go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, let me walk you through this. So you wanna build a new bridge, costs $100 million. And that's what you see. You see in print, oh my goodness, should we do this? Should we not do this? Let's have a vote. Because it usually is your municipality that makes that decision. Oh my goodness, $100 million. You know, that's a lot of money. Uh, I'm not sure we can afford that money. When is it ever mentioned that, yes, 30 years from now, by the time we have paid for all this, we will actually have paid $200 million. That's an average. Okay. So debt is a huge part of this. So... I know I keep on harping about these U.S. notes. So these, the Federal Reserve notes, have created that 18 trillion in debt. These, by the acts that were done 150 years ago, have saved us about 14 billion dollars in interest payments. And, and if you want to know how the math came about, go on the website, it's on there also. I'll walk you through the math, okay? Um, debt. I, I want to I just explain how government debt works, because I think a lot of us really don't know that. Let, let, let's talk about you and me. So um, we want to buy a house and we, we buy a 300,000, let's say we buy a house and we get a $300,000 mortgage. Okay. And, and let, just round numbers, round numbers. So let's say our mortgage payments are $3,000 a month. So mortgage plus, you know, it's escrowed plus uh, insurance plus it's a $3,000 a month. So you sign the mortgage and you buy, you buy the house. And the first month, you make your $3,000 mortgage payment. Okay, all right, fine. The next month you go, ah, you know, it's a little tight. We've had to buy furniture and I replaced the carpeting. You know, I don't have 3,000, I only got 2,000. So what I do is I borrow $1,000 off my credit cards. I mean, interest rates are really low. I can get money on my credit card for 2%. That's, that's cheaper than my mortgage rate. Why would I not do this? So you do it. Next month, ah, you know, we've got problems again. At the end of the year, what you've done bad <laughs> you put ten thousand dollars on your credit cards it's not been a good year all right what's your debt be very careful how you answer now well i think how you and i answer that's pretty obvious we owe the three hundred thousand dollar mortgage minus virtually zero paid back in principal let's just call it three hundred thousand plus the ten thousand dollars we now owe to the credit cards, right? Isn't that what you and I would call debt? So we now owe 310,000. And of course, that's exactly how the government figures. Oh no. At the end of the year, you know what the government says it's in debt? Hold on, hope you're sitting down. Are you gonna fall over when I tell you this? As far as the government is concerned, they only owe $10,000. Because the government only owes what it has put on its credit card. Well, the government doesn't have a credit card. Oh yes, it does. They're called treasury bills and bonds and notes. That's what the government issues. The government does not count as debt what it has actually signed as contracts because those are future obligations and therefore they're not counted. You go, what kind of a world is that? Really? So, but I felt we only owed 18 trillion. Ladies and gentlemen, let me help you. We actually owe 205 trillion. And let me tell you when that'll be paid back, never. It'll never be paid back. So this series, Infrastructure Without Debt, is massively important, okay? Because we've got to get our country back on track and here's a way of doing it. Okay, so that's my little debt and interest kind of a section of this video. Let's talk about infrastructure, all right? Here's a chart that you can see online and you'll notice 
that over the last few years, as the American Society of Civil Engineers, and by the way, the full report is on the website. You, you, you get tired of hearing this, I'm sure. All right. Uh, you'll notice that the, the curve, it's an exponential curve. It keeps on rising. The longer we delay, the more money is needed in order to bring our infrastructure up to date, in order to repair what we already have, the two things are not the same, and in order to build new infrastructure that we need. So this isn't new. I didn't come up with this by myself, all right? Um, 20 years ago, there was an act introduced by Congress called the State and Local Government Economic Empowerment Act. By the way, <laughs> a copy is on the website. Does that sound familiar? It was introduced by Ray LaHood. Now, what's interesting is he was a Republican House member, and then when President Obama became president, he called in a Republican to become his Secretary of Transportation. So Ray LaHood was able to bounce back between two sides. And that's really interesting. Uh, that's very important. That's what's needed in our Congress today. He got 22 co-sponsors on this act from both sides of the aisle. Wow. Um, in short, what it said is, remember this was 20 years ago, the numbers were radically different than they are today, and look at the chart, you'll, you'll see it's obvious. It called for a spending of $72 billion every single year for five years in a row. And a whole bunch of other parts, and it's all on the website, all right? You know what, You've, you probably have never heard of it because I hate to tell you this, but it didn't pass. Okay, so what about today? Why didn't it pass then? Well, it didn't pass for two reasons, number one, we did not owe 18 trillion on our credit on our government credit card, so people weren't na massively as uptight about the government debt then as they are today, which we are. Everybody talks about it. The, the word economics wasn't even in the general dictionary. I mean, it was, of course, but we didn't go around talking about it all the time. We didn't talk about Federal Reserve interest rates. All those have become part of the common diction, part of the common talk around the coffee tables. Okay, the, the water fountain because it's a big deal today. And infrastructure was not in the sad shape that it's in today. So you add those two together, and people said, you know what? Yeah, maybe it's a good idea, but it's not that important, all right? And finally, US notes, what I'm describing here, they were not as well understood. There are a lot of people now digging back into history saying, but what did we do before? It's not like we've always had wonderful infrastructure. We've had these problems before. Let's talk about infrastructure after a war, like the Civil War. It destroyed an enormous amount, all right? It was worse, worse condition than today. They solved it. Maybe we can solve it again. All right. Let's recap on US notes, okay? These things I keep on talking about. So why do I think they're so exciting? Well, number one, they're interest-free. I think we talked about that. Number two, they do not increase real debt. Yeah, it's listed formally as debt, but it's not officially debt, debt, debt. It's no debt, debt, okay? They decrease federal and local deficits. Remember, most infrastructure spending is not the federal government, okay? They run the FAA, they run um, the, the interstate highway system, but from an intra infrastructure perspective, I don't know what the percentage is, but probably 90% of all infrastructure structure spending is local. It's in the municipality that you live in, all right? So it not only decreases the federal deficit, but it increases the pressure on state, local, township, city, school board deficits, all right? It can be value matched to the increase in GDP. This isn't just okay, we're going to go out and print a whole bunch of money. No, 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 no. This is hardcore. This is what needs to be built. That will increase the GDP in our country, increase the tax base, increase our productivity. There are all sorts of studies that show that every dollar spent on infrastructure is multiplied many times in production and ultimately in tax take. Okay? And finally, as far as U.S. notes are concerned, they're counter-cyclical. I haven't spent a bunch of time talking about that. Our current system of debt spending is massively pro-cyclical, which means we spend more on the up cycle in the business cycle, and we spend less on the down cycle. So what happens is our debt-based system, when we go up, makes us go way up. When we go down, makes us go way down. 
so people get hurt, jobs get lost, businesses declare bankruptcy, houses are lost. That pro-cyclicality, a uh, $63 word, you know what I mean, in favor of cycles, is so it's part of our current system. What I'm suggesting here with the U.S. notes, this is counter-cyclical. So what happens is when it goes up, it naturally stabilizes. When it goes down, it naturally stabilizes. All right? Some good answers. We've got to do this. You can get a hold of me. You can get a hold of your congressman. Talk to your senator. Talk to your mayor. When this, when the attempt was made to put this act through in 1999, hundreds of municipalities passed resolutions saying, please do this. There's a map of the United States on the website that shows the municipalities and the acts that they passed, the resolutions that they passed. Let me just walk you through the website just, just very quickly. So this is infrastructurewithoutdebt.org. So first you'll see how will this work. That's a longer article that outlines what I've got on this video, plus a lot of the material in the past videos. And if you haven't looked at them, I suggest you go back and have a look at them. Walks you through the details of what's this really all about, all right? Then there's a section called documentation. On the top are the municipalities that I just mentioned, all the ones that have already passed resolutions. Then there are legal documents, okay? Past acts, there's the act of 1861, of 1862, the one of 1999, and the list of all the co-sponsors. You can have a look if you're, if, if you're a, a member of Congress, is still a member today that signed it then, might or might not be whether they were voted in or not okay then there's a lot of historical documentation to walk you through details if that's what you want is this for real did this ever work what happened why not okay it's there and then finally is the about 80 page long um, regular report of the ASCE the American Society of Civil Engineers then, then there's a section called Plan Advocates. I think it's all the way over to the, uh, the uh, right-hand side. That's for you to sign up. You say, yes, I'm in favor of this. And you'll see there's a bunch of names there already. Then there are sponsors and related articles. The related articles are basically news. And, and we, we've got to get a system of, um, of working that out properly. You can help us. Send us articles that you see that should be on this. I would appreciate that. Thank you once more. I'm Oli Korch of the Monetary Trust Initiative. Let me quote a president of ours. Yes, we can. Thanks ever so much.